I don't trust ButterFS. I don't trust it. I don't trust it at all. I would never use it. I, I have no interest in ever using it. I don't really know why anybody uses it, to be perfectly honest. Um, if you want the dedupe feature where you can do block level deduplication, um, you can do that with XFS now. XFS in more recent versions, XFS can do um, copy on write block level deduplication. Um, so, yeah. And my JDupes tool can actually, with the capital B option, can do that find and deduplicate of files that are identical. It can merge the data but not the inodes. So you can do that. Um, so that it's not just a ButterFS thing anymore. And I guess my problem is it's been, it's been in development for over a decade and it's still not really stable. <laughs> like it's stable, but it's not. Like there's always another problem around the corner with this damn thing. And I, I don't, I just don't trust it. I can't trust it. There's no, there's no way that I would use it. It's, I understand that it, people have been developing the crap out of it, but I don't trust it. I don't trust ZFS either, partly because it's not something that was written for Linux in the first place and it has to be tacked in using Fuse, but also because this is the thing, okay? A lot of people don't understand that if you add complexity to a system, you add points of failure. You, you add ways for things to screw up and cause you a problem. Simple is better. Simple is better if no other reason than the fact that humans wrote the crap, okay? Humans have to write the software. And the more complicated the software gets, the more scenarios exist that you would have to test for and think about and all that. And if you think about just like a function that takes an, just like an 8-bit integer, okay? 8-bit unsigned integer as an argument. That immediately has 256 possible outcomes. Just one 8-bit integer as the argument. 256 possible outcomes. You start stacking stuff. I mean, you've got, you've got pointers to data structures. Oh, if something goes wrong with that, don't even ask, dude. But this, this is the thing. If it's more complicated, you shut up. If it's more complicated, something can go wrong more easily because there's no way that everyone has tested every possible path that things could go. So they're usually only going to test for things that are problems. Like, oh, we, we know we've had this bug. <clears throat> Maybe if we have a test suite, we have a test suite that checks to see if that bug has been reintroduced. And, and that's it. Usually you test for things that have gone wrong before um, or you run tests to make sure that certain critical things come back correct, like they don't return wacky values or whatever. People don't test complex systems for every possibility because it's a statistical impossibility to do so. So if you have to take something, a, a file system layer that runs in kernel mode, right? at least in the case of ButterFS and XFS, runs in kernel mode. Um, this thing can crash your computer. It can hose all kinds of stuff because it runs at full privilege. And then you want to take it and instead of just doing directory entries and inodes and you know block allocation maps of whatever sort, I'm showing my Commodore 64 heritage on that one, aren't I? But, you know, instead of a, a table of allocations and directory entries, you want to take that, and now you want to add snapshots in the file system, at the file system level. Oh, and now you want to add CRCs for all the data. Oh, and now you want to add deduplication of all the data. Well, think about this. First of all, the deduplication thing adds a whole layer in and of itself, because what do you have to have to deduplicate? Now you can't trust that an inode and an extent that's allocated for that inode is that that inode owns that extent. Now, any inode can own any data extent. So now you have to have another structure to track that. And then you've got CRCs for everything. Well, now you need another data structure to track that. What if something goes wrong with the whole CRC algorithm? What if, what if there's like <clears throat> an integer overflow or something? Oopsie, you know. The more features you add, the more problems can occur, the more complex it is to check for correctness. 
And they're adding these features to XFS too, but like ButterFS already has like RAID built into the file system. Like, and, and ZFS has the same problem. You're taking the file system and making all these other functions that should be something else that sort of sits on top of or just hooks into the file system from a separate place in as integral parts of the file system. While there are some benefits to that, yeah, now you have, like, okay, let's use the car analogy because cars, because cars analogies always work in tech. What's the difference between my Mitsubishi Mirage and a Mercedes or BMW? The big difference, other than the fact that my car is way underpowered by comparison and a lot lighter and so on, it's a much simpler car. A Mercedes or BMW is a car designed to have a ton of features, fancy shit, which means there's processors and computers everywhere in that damn car. There's sensors everywhere in that damn car. There's all these components. They all do different things, and they're all in some way dependent on others. <clears throat> if you were like to draw a dependency graph of how things in the car work, you know, you just had all these lines going everywhere, mine might look like a small, simple spider web, but the fucking Mercedes is going to look like somebody took a box of spaghetti noodles and threw it on the floor. And that's the problem. Like, oh, the, something completely unrelated to engine function went poof. But hey, Mercedes is just going to be like, hey, there's something wrong with your car. Um, we're refusing to start it or whatever. Why? Because it's a complicated system. Oh, we don't, we, no, we don't want you to try to figure it out. We don't want you to take it to a mechanic. This, this obscure processor you don't know exists and does God knows what that isn't vital to the core functionality of the vehicle. Oh, that's hosed. So now, you know, just to be on the safe side, we have to shut everything down. Complex systems. And that's the problem. The complex system has a lot... It, it can do a lot of things, but it means it also has a lot of ways to ruin everything. And that's it. That's one of the reasons that people, like, pine for Windows 7 or even Windows XP or 2000. Um, that's one of the reasons that if you take a teenager today and you put them in front of a fully configured... Windows 98 machine and you say okay do these things no guidance they can figure it out pretty quickly it's usually faster despite being an ancient computer then everything is simpler and honestly better organized in Windows 8 they forced the desktop window manager to always be on they forced what you considered what you called Aero A E R O back in the Vista and 7 days well, that became mandatory in Windows 8, and if a feature was missing on the video card, they would software emulate it. The problem is now all video drivers either have to offload to the GPU or are inherently slower if it's an older computer that doesn't have that feature. Rather than just not spending any of the compute power doing the dumb video thing in the first place. And I understand the benefits, but this is the reason that things getting are getting shittier over time as far as like reliability, weird behavior, because all this stuff keeps getting added in. Now in Windows 11, they've got all these wacky security things like core isolation. If you, if you go to the internet and type Windows 11 core isolation problem, and you just, you'll see there are so many things that are broken by that. Do you need it? Do I need it? Does anyone who's not in some sort of like sensitive environment like, I'm just a dude who yells at a camera and, you know, I don't know, draws furry porn or something. I can't even draw. But uh, tells people that I draw furry porn on stream. And I don't need core isolation. I don't care about the Spectre CPU bug. I don't care about any of that stuff. None of that is a problem for me. No one gives a shit about me and my computers. Nobody is trying to infiltrate my shit. Nobody cares. Like, I, I don't care. I want my computer to perform as reliably and quickly as possible. And I don't care about your stupid security mitigations that address problems I'm never going to run into.